Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about limit properties. So there are three basic limit properties. Uh, let a and b be any real number constant and let n be a positive integer. So the first basic limit is the limit as x approaches c of a is equal to a. So let's look at an example to see if that makes sense. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of 5 is 5. Let's prove that. So the function that we usually have, right, it's always the limit as x approaches some number of some function, f of x. So in this spot right here, we have a function. My function happens to be 5. So what is the function y equals, or f of x, equals 5? That's simply a horizontal line at y equals 5. So if this is 5, this line going through it is the function y equals 5. So it makes sense that when x is negative 2, right, we have to check the limit from the left and the limit from the right because there is no plus or minus. Um, we're going to say, okay, if there's a closed circle here, even though it doesn't say it, right, the line is made up of all these closed circles, the limit from the left and the limit from the right approach the same value, which will be 5. So pretty much any constant will have the limit value be the same. So example number two, I'd love for you guys to try an example. So you guys try one, make it up, and see if it works. All right, let's try example number two. So the basic limit rule here says the limit as x approaches c of x is equal to c. So how does this work? So again, my function is always found inside here. So my function is y equals x. And we know that that's just the line with a slope of 1 that goes through the origin. This is the line y equals x. So I want to find what's happening at x equals 4. So let's say this is 4. So when x is 4, there is some closed circle here that's going to approach some sort of y value. And we see that the limit from the left and the limit from the right equal that same y value. So all we would have to do, honestly, is just see that it's one for one, right? If y is equal to x and x is 4, then y is 4. So 4. Again, you try, do another example here. We'll check those tomorrow. And last but not least is the rule here that says the limit as x approaches a number of x to the n is equal to c to the n. So what do I mean by that? Uh, let's use here, the limit as x approaches 2 of x to the third is simply 2 to the third. So again, my function that I'm dealing with is this guy in here. So we're dealing with y equals x to the third. So we should know that that's a cubic function, which looks something like that. And I want to know what's happening at x equals 2. Again, when we go up to the curve, there'll be a closed circle there. So the limit from the left and the limit from the right are equal, and they'll be equal to the same y value. So when x is 2, 2 to the third, you could even say 8 is going to be my y value. So here, my y value is 8. So you could even say that that's 8 as well if you want to keep going. Now, why don't you try to see if you can use another example similar to this, and we could try going over those in class tomorrow. All right, let's go on to the next page. So there actually are more advanced limit properties, um, and here they are. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And they basically say the limit of a sum is equal to the limit of the first function plus the limit of the second function. So I basically put up here that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is l, and the limit as x approaches c of g of x, this should read, please change that, is m. So if I'm taking the limit of this entire sum, I could break it up into two parts. I can take the limit of f of x as x approaches c and take the limit of g of x as x approaches c and then add those two separate limits together. So in this case, it would be l plus m. Same thing with the subtraction. If I have the limit of a subtraction, I can take the limit of each of the pieces. So I could take the limit of f of x and subtract the limit from g of x, and then I get l minus m. So this is your sum, this is your difference, this is your multiplication. I'm taking the limit as we're taking a number times a function. So I could just take that number and multiply it by the limit. And we would get k times, this is L. 
Now I can multiply two different functions. This one's like a scalar multiple when k is just a number. This one's when I multiply two different functions together. So if I take the limit of a product, I can basically take the limit of each function and then multiply them together. Same thing for division. If I'm taking the limit of a division of two functions, I could take the limit of the top, the limit of the bottom, and then just divide those. And then last but not least, if I have the limit of a function being raised to a power, I can take the limit of the function, then raise it to the power, right? I could just switch the order um, because exponent properties say that multiplication is commutative. So let's put all of this into practice. So I'm going to do example one with you. It says, use the graphs of f of x and g of x below to evaluate these three limits. So I want to find the limit as x approaches 1 of this sum. So what I can do is I can take the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Then I can add that to the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x. So we're going to look graphically now um, for each of them. So the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Notice that there's no plus or minus, so we have to check from the left and the right. So here's 1, so the limit from the left and the limit from the right, both equal 2. So this is 2 plus, and over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x. So here's your g of x function. We're going to take the limit from the left and the limit from the right. They approach the same y value, this case, 0. So 2 plus 0 gives me 2. Sorry, I didn't leave much space here. Uh, same thing for B. So for B, I'll do the work for B down here. We're going to take the limit as X approaches 1 of F of X. And then we're going to multiply that by the limit as X approaches 1 of G of X. Now, we honestly just did that, right? Because I'm using the same value. So the limit as X approaches 1 of F of X was 2. So we can put the 2 here. And the limit of G of X as X approaches, approaches 1 is 0. So we're just going to do now here 2 times 0, which gives me 0. And then here, I'm not going to write it out because I'm kind of out of room. We're going to do the two things separately. So we take the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x and divide that by the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x. So in this case, 2 divided by 0, which is undefined. You are not allowed to divide by 0. Okay, so let's take a look at example two. Um, basically, I'm asking you to evaluate all of these limits given these conditions. And I actually realized that I'm missing one, so I'm just gonna add another condition. And we'll say the limit as x approaches one of f of x is equal to negative two. So basically, I want you to use the properties to rewrite each of these. So in the first one, we have the limit as x approaches one of some sum. I want you to start this one off by breaking it up. So you know that we can break this up as the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x plus the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x. And then I want you to keep going using the information that they give you. The limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is here, which is negative 2. So we're going to put that next. And then we're going to add it to the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x which is negative 4. So negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6. So that limit of the sum is negative 6. So this is really the work that I need you to sh show. If you need help with the limit um, breakdowns, you can look up here, and this is how they all break down. So take a minute now. Try to see if you can finish these, and we will start class off tomorrow by going over these. All right. Have a good night.